<sighs> yes, more irregular verbs. More of them. And actually, this one is maybe the most irregular of the irregular verbs. <clears throat> I mean, I, I know I said that uh, back when I was doing these for Latin 1 students for Wolo. And this one's a little weirder than most, all right? This is the irregular verb fio fieri, uh, which in your book is introduced in 46 or 47. Malo is introduced in one, fio is introduced in the other one. So obviously, if you've got the Latin 2 Ecce Romani book, those are where, those are the two chapters to look for Fio and Malo in. Uh, if you're some other random person and you don't have an Eki Romani book, well, you know, look it up wherever you want. <laughs> or just listen to me talk about it. So Fio Fieri is a stranger irregular than most, and you can already see it when you look at the principal parts. Fio does not look weird or special. Um, that looks pretty normal, like a lot of other relatively simple verbs. But then the infinitive is Fieri, and that does look weird. I mean, besides looking a little bit different from Fio, it looks like it's passive. Even though Fio does not look like it's passive, Fieri does look like it's passive. And then Factosum is our third principal part. We don't get a fourth. I mean, Factus is clearly supine in nature. Um, and But Factosum is definitely passive. So when you look at this, if you know what deponent verbs are, you might be thinking, is this some sort of weird deponent verb? And the answer is no, it's sort of the opposite. Uh, let me tell you, so what fio is, it's the passive facio, all right? So that is to say, when you see facio in text, if you want it to be passive, they probably aren't going to put a passive ending on facio. Instead, they're going to use fio. They're going to use this verb instead of putting passive endings on this verb, this verb which is technically not irregular but it is when it becomes passive. So when you then translate fio, you're gonna translate it one of these ways. You could translate it literally as the passive of facio. Facio means to make or to do, then the passives would be to be made or to be done. But very oftentimes, instead of being translated one of those ways, it'll be translated one of these ways, either as to happen or to become. Because to become something is sort of to be made into that thing, or for something to happen is sort of the same as saying to be done. So oftentimes you'll end up translating it one of these two ways. Um, but, you know, if the context makes sense to do one of these, then do one of those. Now, here's what's weird about it. It's definitely irregular, and it definitely does not look passive, but it is. That's why I say it's sort of the opposite of a deponent. Deponents look passive, but they're not. They're active. Fio looks active, but it isn't. It's passive. Now, in terms of the actual conjugating, there's nothing that weird going on here. If you saw fio and just thought it was like a random fourth conjugation verb or a third io, um, which arguably it is sort of like a third io, right? It's the passive of facio. It would conjugate like this, right? There's nothing super weird going on here. You have normal endings on it. You have the normal vowels that come before the endings. Uh, you could guess these based on what you see for the stems. So the conjugating itself isn't that irregular. What's irregular is that it looks active but has a passive meaning. And that's actually going to be true no matter what we look at. You know, if we look at the imperfect, same deal. There's nothing weird about the way this imperfect verb is spelled. You would expect there to be an I and an E and then BA plus an ending. That's normal. Or even in the future. The future is done as if it were any old third I.O. or fourth conjugation future verb. All right. So in terms of the actual spelling of this, it's not that weird. It's just that even though these have active endings on them, you're going to translate them as if they're passive. Now, like the other irregular verbs videos I've been doing, I'm not going to get into all tenses. I'm just going to show you those three. Well, why am I only going to show you those three? Well, because... Um, if it is uh, perfect, like if it's in the perfect system and you go to the perfect stem, well, it's no longer irregular. It looks passive and is passive because you're using factosum. You're literally using what you would have used from facio to make a perfect passive anyway. Um, I'm not going to get into the subjunctive on this because it doesn't do anything especially weird. If you follow the same rules for making other similar verbs subjunctive, um, and by similar, I mean things that look like normal third IOs or fourths. You're going to get the same things there as well. 
So if you just follow the other rules that we already know, you'll be fine in all of those. You just need to know that there is this special verb that looks like it's active and has a bunch of active forms, but it's still going to be translated as the passive of to do or to make. All right, well, I don't know about you guys, but I just filmed four videos, short ones perhaps, but I just filmed four videos and I am burning through my camera's picture and video memory. So I'm gonna go uh, and I'm gonna finish up my work so I can go find somewhere with good Wi-Fi to upload these and I will see you guys later. Bye.